Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my recipe for pine slice. Now for any of you guys that don't know what pine slice is, it's basically one of those baked goods that you can find at any West Indian or Guyanese bakery. Now all it really consists of is two thick layers of a very thick and dense sponge cake. And basically in between those two layers of sponge cake, there is a nice little layer of the pine filling or a pine tart filling. Basically, it's just pineapple, crushed pineapple that's been cooked down with sugar and some spices, and it's so good, guys. It's like a really, really good sponge cake with pineapple inside. That's the best way that I could describe it. But a lot of people have been requesting this recipe, and I can see the reason why. It's because there's no recipes for this on the internet. I've been looking, doing some research, and basically, I had to go based on taste and based on my own research by having this dish at certain bakeries. Now, I know you guys are going to enjoy this recipe. I went ahead and tested it out a few times, and it is so delicious, guys. I know by the end of this video, you guys are going to want to go in your kitchen and start baking this dish. So let's get into the recipe. So in order to start making our pine slice, we're going to have to start off with that pineapple filling. The reason we start off with the filling is because we're going to make it, and we're going to want it to cool before we actually put it into the pine slice. So into my pan here, I'm going in with my can of crushed pineapple. Now some people like to do this with the fresh pineapple, but I like to use the crush because it's much easier. I'm going in with some sugar, and you can use brown sugar if you'd like, or you can use white sugar, it doesn't matter. I'm also going in with a cinnamon stick, and I'm also going to go in with some freshly ground nutmeg. And for the nutmeg, it is really as much or as little as you'd like. I just like to put in a little bit just to give it a nice little flavoring, and then that's about it. And once you go in with all of your grated nutmeg, you are going to go in with a little pinch of salt. Because when making any type of dessert, salt always adds a nice little flavor and brings out the sweetness and everything. And once you add in all of your ingredients, you're going to go ahead and allow it to cook. You're going to leave it on a medium, medium-low heat. Allow it to simmer and let it get really thick and allow that color to develop and get nice and brown. I want to show you guys my... Matthew's Guyanese cooking spoons that I just got. So we're going to stir this around, allow it to cook. This might take about 15 to 20 minutes. And you want to keep stirring so this way it doesn't burn. And I'll come back and show you guys what the finished product looks like. Once you've got your pineapple filling cooking on your stove, it is time to make the dough for the pine slice or the batter for the pine slice. So into my bowl here, I have some softened slash melted butter. I'm going to go in with my sugar and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cream the butter and the sugar together. You don't have to get it all fully dissolved but you want to get it dissolved for the most part. So I'm going to keep stirring it, I'm going to do it for about four to five minutes until it is nice and smooth. Once you've gotten your butter and the sugar creamed together a little bit, you're going to go in with just a pinch of salt. Because whenever you're making any desserts, you want to go in with some salt to bring out that sweetness. You're going to go in with a little splash of vanilla. Or you could use mixed essence if you'd like. And then I'm also going to go in with some freshly grated nutmeg. Remember, not too much because you don't want to overpower the dish. But then again, you can add in as per your taste. So once you add in those ingredients, you're going to go ahead and stir them together and get them combined. Once you've creamed together those ingredients, you're going to go in with all of your all-purpose flour. And once you go in with your all-purpose flour, you're also going to go in with your baking powder. So at this point, we're going to begin to mix these ingredients up because we're going to want to get it fully incorporated. And I don't know if I mentioned this before, but you can do this in your stand mixer if you'd like. You just have to make sure and be careful not to overmix, or else the final product can get very tough. So once you get some of this incorporated and it starts to get crumbly, you're going to start adding in your milk little by little. Now, usually I would use carnation milk or evaporated for milk for this, but you can also use whole milk. But I'm going to be using coconut milk today. The reason being is because I did not have the regular milk on hand. So this is what I'm going to make use of today. And of course, for any of you guys that are vegan, you could swap out the regular milk for the coconut milk like I'm using. And you can also use vegan butter instead of the regular butter that's made from milk. So I'm going to keep stirring in my butter, I mean my milk, little by little until this comes together and it forms a very very thick batter. So this is what the batter looks like once it's done mixing. I did not use the full can of milk. I have about 
two tablespoons left and I did not want to add it just because I don't want the batter to be too runny. I think this is perfectly fine. So it will depend on the type of flour that you have and the dryness or the moisture content of the flour. But I didn't use the full can. You might end up using the full can of whatever milk that you use. So at this point, I do have my oven preheating at 350 degrees. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it out onto this cookie tray and I'm going to go ahead and put some parchment paper down so it doesn't stick. Once I put it down onto this tray, I'm going to allow it to bake in the oven for about 15 minutes or just until when a toothpick is inserted, it comes out clean. And of course, I'll come back and show you guys what that looks like. The dough or the cake part for my pine slice has finished baking. It baked for about 16 minutes and when I put a toothpick in, it came out clean. So that's how I knew it was done. So I went ahead and I allowed this to cool completely. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to cut it straight down the middle and try to get it as even as possible. I also wanted to show you guys the pineapple mixture, how thick it got after cooking. It cooked for about 20 minutes and what I did after that was I just took it off the heat and I allowed it to cool. As you guys can see, I've cut the two pieces in half and you just want to be careful as you're cutting them and you're flipping them because the pieces of dough or the actual cake are very, very delicate. So you want to be careful. So what I did was I took my pineapple mixture and I put it onto one of the halves. And what I'm going to do is just spread it out into an even layer, get it as even as possible. And I'm going to come back and show you what to do next. Once you've gone ahead and gotten that pineapple mixture in a nice thick even layer on top of this first piece of cake. What we're going to go ahead and do is take that second piece and flip it on top of this piece. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you guys what it looks like. Once you go ahead and put that second layer of cake on top of the one that you spread with the pineapple filling, you're going to go ahead and take that same parchment paper that it was on and wrap it over. So this way you have something covering it. If you need to take an extra piece of parchment paper and do this, feel free to do so. And of course, you want to be careful as you're handling it so it doesn't fall apart. So what I'm going to do now is just cover that with a, another small baking sheet or any flat plate or something like that that you have that covers the whole thing. And then I'm going to go ahead and take some cans of beans or just something to weight it down really well. And you want to make sure it's even so this way it presses down evenly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow this to sit for about two to three hours or just until the cake becomes very, very compact. The reason why we do this is because you do not want to cut it and have everything fall apart and become very messy. So I'm going to allow it to go ahead and press down for a couple of hours and then I'm going to come back and we'll be ready to cut into our pine slice. All right, guys, the pine slice have been sitting under those weights under the cans for about two to three hours now. So I'm just going to peel back all of the parchment paper and I wanted to show you guys the top of it. As you guys can see, it's gotten very, very compact. It wasn't as fluffy as it was when it first got out of the oven. So I'm going to remove all the parchment paper and I'm going to come back and we're going to go ahead and cut into it. All right, so I have it on my board now and what I'm going to go ahead and do is start cutting into it. And you can cut the pieces as big or as small as you'd like. All right, guys, this is what the final pine slice looks like. As you guys can see, the layers of that actual cake or the bread mixture that we poured into the pan is nice and compact now. And then the inside is not falling out or anything. There's a perfect layer of that pineapple on the inside. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a try for you guys. This is really good, and I'm telling you guys, it is much better than the bakery one. It's not dry, it's nice and moist on the inside. Overall, really good stuff. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and give this video a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet, and go ahead and leave all of your comments down below. I'd like to see what you guys want me to make next. I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye guys.